Yeah, I feel like the chapter really goes into like a big question on each side of the ball for the Patriots. And on the offensive side, it really is like who's the coordinator and and are they is it the same offense that they ran last year? Are they doing different things? Like who's calling the plays? There's just a lot of questions about that. I mean, I, I think that um that's one of that's probably the biggest question is what the heck are they gonna look like on offense? And if they are changing systems, did they just ruin you know, a a, a, de- a pretty decent rookie season for Mac Jones, and are they going to have to reteach him? You know, you think you, you know Josh McDaniels leaving and not having an heir apparent, sort of an understudy, like you know we've seen in Buffalo. Brian Dayball leaves, but then you have Ken Dorsey there waiting in the wings. You have Joe Brady, you know, there to tutor Jer- uh, Josh Allen. I mean, it's it, it's about as good as a situation you can have. And then you look at the Patriots, and they're going with. Joe Judge as a quarterbacks coach, who was, um, you know, if you ask anybody around the building, he was a disaster when he was a receivers coach, in addition to special teams coordinator, his final season in New England. And, you know, Matt Patricia, who I, I don't, I think Matt would do fine just with the offensive line. Um, I, you know, he played that in, in, in college. He's coached that a little bit in the pros. You know, he has Billy Yates assisting him. I think that's fine. But what else is going to be on his plate? And is Belichick going to be sort of, you know, calling the plays? It's a mess. It's, you know, really the Patriots, you don't know how good they can be until we get some answers on the offensive side of the ball. And I don't know when we're going to get those answers. I think it's going to be an evolving thing that we see over the course of the season. And that's even before you get into, well, if Belichick's attention is now more on offense, what happens with the defense that has underachieved the last few years with Steve Belichick and Gerard Mayo? So there's... There's a lot of questions about what's going on in New England, and it starts with what's going on with the offense. The the thing that really scares me most is just Judge and Patricia. We've already heard a lot about, you know, the amount of time that Belichick would spend or Brady working on offense in his heyday. We've heard stories of that already. The things that just keep, you know, scratching in the back of my mind are John Mara walking up to a podium last year saying we did about just the worst possible job developing Daniel Jones. We did – about as poor of a job as you could have done. And then you look back to stories of Patricia in his first year in Detroit where veterans are popping champagne in the locker room that were impending free agency just because they knew they don't have to come back to Detroit anymore and run stairs of Matt Patricia. Like, their coaching track records, at least since leaving New England, have been piss poor. It's been, you know, horror story after horror story with a lot of these guys. How much much (laughs) saving grace can Belichick really offer to these guys is one thing, but I think – one of the benefits of having Mac Jones as the guy that you've bet on is just the cerebral part of this game. The fact that he had like, that was the biggest thing that was touted out of college, just the ability to kind of like understand and run an offense and implement it on his own. I I, I think that really shows a veteran mind in a very, you know, young quarterback. And I think that that'll at least help smooth some things over. And I think also him, you know, that looks like he's in great shape. It's, the classic off-season story of shape of his life, but you know it's it's a far cry from the pudgy you know cigar pictures of him winning the national championship. Defensively, I think there's a lot of questions. Also, we really have their defense declining in large. You know, the loss of J.C. Jackson is really huge, and I think the first is cornerbacks. Like, who are going to be the top cornerbacks for this team? Uh, and the second is the interesting sort of change at linebacker where the veterans that have been there a long time are gone. And you write about this a lot in the chapter. They're sort of going with smaller, faster guys, bringing in Mac Wilson and then getting guys back from injury like Raquan McMillan, who missed last year, and Cameron McGrone. And there's no more Dante Hightower and there's no more Jamie Collins. But those guys definitely seem to be falling off last year. Dante Hightower was still very strong in the run game. It's a much more one-dimensional player than he once was, but, you know, it helped out New England a lot in the run game and just the front seven in general. But New England's really leaning a lot on these young guys now. What are you thinking about the young guys, Greg? The, so let's start with the young cornerbacks, Jack Jones and Marcus Jones. Are we actually going to see a good amount of these guys? It, based off of off-season practices, um, we'll see a lot of Jack Jones. Um, he was out there a lot. I was surprised that Terrence Mitchell was almost a day one starter, you know, a journeyman guy in in Houston. Um, Jalen Mills will be out there. And I think, you know, Jonathan Jones is coming back from injury. I thought I I think he's always been one of the the top slot cornerbacks, which is one of the toughest jobs in in football. 
I think it'll be Jack Jones versus Terrence Mitchell versus Malcolm Butler uh, as far as the, you know, one of the top cornerback roles. Uh, I don't think they – they obviously don't have a number one. Uh, I think Jack has the most upside. Marcus Jones, I don't know, he's been battling an injury. He wasn't out there much in OTAs. You know, I, I agree with Greg Cosell, who I've talked to after the draft, and he sees him more as a honey badger type guy. I think he's more of a successor in the secondary, which they're already loaded with safety. So I don't know where he plays outside of, you know, getting into dime and, and doing th- things with personnel. Now, that gets you into, can they even get to that? And that's been a problem for that defense the last couple of years where ever since Vince Wilfork went to Houston, they've been weak in the middle and they can't stop the run well enough. Devon Godchow, they put a lot of money into him. I don't think he was all that good last year. They didn't do it. They didn't even draft a nose tackle this year to give them an option. So it's all on Godchow again to do a better job. And I think you're right to single out Uche. I think, you know, you look at pass rush and coverage, you know, if your coverage is a little bit weak, you can deal with that if your pass rush is better. And a guy like Chase Winovich never worked out. They never really, you know, Judon really didn't have a running mate. I think they're pegging Josh Uche for that role. Uh, Steve Belichick and Bill Belichick both called him one of the biggest puzzle pieces in this defense in the offseason. And I think they're right. I mean, I do think they have some upside. They just got to they gotta let some of these kids play. And that's been one of my main criticisms, especially last year. And, you know, even going back a couple of years, the Cam Newton year. Just let the kids play so you can see what they're capable of. I do think Uche is capable of more. It's just they they don't like to trust youngsters very much. But now I think they've gotten in their, uh, into a situation where they have no choice. They have to, especially with the cap situation and their lack of good drafting and you know things like that. Now they have to play the kids. And I think Uche is the guy who could stand up and do do a good job for them. What are your thoughts on Christian Barmore then? Because, I mean, he was really yep. fantastic. As an interior pass rusher, you know, eighth in the league among interior defensive linemen and pressures. How do you think he starts to – do you think they start to fold him more into the run game coverage? Do you think they start to use him more on three downs? How do you think they start to implement him more in rotation with Godcha? Yeah, it's a good question, um, Kale. And, and you're absolutely right. He was sensational um, as a rookie, you know, one of the best – interior lineman rookie seasons uh, any Patriot has ever had. I mean, you go back to even when Vince Wilfork was, I think, a, a first-round pick in the lower half of the first round. He didn't play a whole lot as a rookie. Of course, you know, they, they were pretty good back then. But I think, you know, they tried him a little bit to give him some first and second down roles last year. He didn't do a great job with it. I think that's going to be one of the things that I watch a lot in training camp and in the preseason. I think they would like to see him uh, add that to his repertoire and be able to, you know, perhaps, uh, you know, maybe against some lighter offensive lines that that he plays all all three downs. Uh, I think that'll be a work in progress, and he's going to need to prove himself. I think they'd like to give him the opportunity, but I still think for now, I think they they like just you know his sub rusher role. You know, he was it was Judon in pressures, and then Barmore was next, and then a humongous drop off after that. So. They need all of that stuff uh, and more if they're going to be better on defense this year. Another young guy to add to the list of guys who need to step up. Yeah, but one that I think I have a little bit more faith in. Like, I think a lot of people are believers in Barmore as opposed to Uche or knowing what you're going to get out of Jack Jones as a rookie or Mac Wilson coming over from Cleveland. I think Barmore leads the young guys. So our, our overall projections for the Patriots are just a little bit above 500. So we definitely have them declining on both offense and defense. They were really good in our numbers last year, in part because they had a couple of very fluky, gigantic wins over Cleveland and Tennessee. Well, I mean, over Jacksonville, too. But, you know, the Jacksonville one gets adjust, you know, opponent adjusted. But mm-hmm. it was colossal. And then the Cleveland and Tennessee wins were just huge. And then the rest of the time they were, you know, kind of good, but obviously had Uh, a little bit of trouble in Buffalo when the weather didn't participate for them. So they end up coming out uh, a little bit above average, making the playoffs in 45% of the simulations. The special team should be a help because it should bounce back from last year. That's where Marcus Jones, if he's healthy, plays a role because he's a really good return man. Yeah, I think the the nugget I had on Jones was he had a uh, kick return, punt return, pick six, and receiving touchdown in college. I mean, if you're talking about do-it-all guys, Marcus Jones is up there. 
Yeah, I uh, had them when I when I went through their schedule when it came out. I had them at nine and eight. So you know, similar to you guys, and and I, I think you're right about last year. I mean, my biggest concern about the team, and it came to fruition with Buffalo. You know, when they go up against a team with a good quarterback and can spread the Patriots out with multiple weapons, how are they going to hold up? And they didn't do that very well um, down the stretch. And you know, do I think they have a chance to be a little bit better this year? Yeah, I do. I don't hate their pieces in the secondary as much as uh, some people. I have probably more concerns about the offensive line than a lot of people relying on Trent Brown to stay healthy and play left tackle is a big risk. Isaiah Wynn, is he around? Is he going to play right tackle? How's he going to do? Cole Strange, was he overdrafted? Is he really ready to be a good starter at left guard as a rookie? And Michael Wenu, uh, you know, look, the kid's had his moments, but <laughs> let's not ignore the fact that they tried him at guard last year and he lost his job to Ted Karras. So, you know, there are a lot of questions on that offensive line and they're going to need that to be a lot better, you know, to set up Mac Jones to have you know, the ability to have success. So, uh, you know, I do like some of what they're doing and I have some optimism, but man, a lot of things need to go right for this team. I think they're more likely to be, they're going to be in the hunt for the sixth and seventh seeds till the end. But I mean, I realize that our projections are all closer to 500 than usual this year, but I don't feel like this team can really challenge Buffalo. I would yeah, not unless there's a, like a scat of injuries for the Bills. The median's pretty high, but they're really missing just those you know, like wide receiver one on offense, uh, a guy who could really break plays off in the run game, a top cornerback. Like it, just the the pieces you think about when you think of a, an upper echelon team are completely absent from this Patriots roster. And I think it's really, you know, I think New England's just kind of banking on, with Belichick, this team can be greater than the sum of its parts. And I, you're banking a lot on scheme. There's enough question marks there already. Uh, Greg Bedard's site, for those who want to follow him more, is bostonsportsjournal.com. It's everything about Boston sports, all kinds of really in-depth coverage, not just all the Patriots coverage that you want, but Red Sox, Celtics, Bruins, Check out his site, please, bostonsportsjournal.com. Uh, Greg, thank you so much for joining us to talk about the Patriots. Really appreciate it. Aaron, you know I've been a loyal reader of Football Outsiders for, I mean, what, two decades now, I think, you know, since I think I was at the Palm Beach Post and covering the Dolphins. So uh, I always look for you're the You're the one book and the one season preview that I make sure to devour uh, as soon as I get it. So thanks for all the work you guys do. 